and welcome to The Art of Being Human. We are about at the end of our review of the chronic illnesses. I really think we can probably finish with this review today. And uh, we've gone through a lot. Now, we've been on chronic illnesses for well over a year. I spent seven months just doing diabetes, and I know we had a lot more than that. We started with AIDS, we started with Rett syndrome, and, and we went on from there. And so I wanted to do a quick review of these, not go over the whole things again. It wasn't necessary to do that, but just do kind of a review of these kinds of illnesses. So a paragraph review. So if you have the illness or if you know somebody that has the illness or somebody in your family has it, you kind of, in a nutshell, know what it is. And we've gone through a lot of those illnesses. There's no way we can cover all of them. But what I wanted to do was cover most of them, especially those that have a neurological base because they are the ones that would be probably affecting your personality the most. And so we're going to continue with that today and this won't take us too much longer and then we're going to get into something else. But I want to start with Gillian Barre. We've all heard of it. It's a muscle weakening illness, and it sometimes gives paralysis. Sometimes the, paral the paralysis is for a set period of time, and you just kind of work out of it and recover from it. But sometimes it's more permanent, and you have it for the rest of your life. It's a dangerous illness. And I can remember there was a new uh, inoculation out for a kind of virus, and they were experimenting with this, and people were getting these, these inoculations. It was like like a flu shot. And this particular virus, I don't know what went wrong with it, but a lot of the people that were getting it got Guillain-Barre. One of my friends who had Guillain-Barre was sick for months. And she almost died from it. It was that serious. And so it was really troubling for, for a lot of people. It could be very serious. But other people got it, and they had flu symptoms, and maybe they couldn't walk for a while. Maybe there was something wrong for a while. And then after that, they just eventually just recovered from it. But it was a serious illness, so let's consider muscle weakness and sometimes paralysis as being the key words as to what Guillain-Barre is. And it a lot of times comes after a person has the flu or after a person has, given, has been given an injection or an inoculation, a vaccine against the flu. And if you have it, it is a serious thing. Now, the next one that I want to just review is hepatitis. Hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver. And if your liver fails, you're in really serious trouble. It lasts for six months or it may last for years. It can be a long, long thing. And there are several types of hepatitis. We hear a lot now about hep C, hepatitis C. And with hepatitis C, uh, you, go, you have it for years, and for years you have no symptoms at all. You would, wouldn't even know you're sick. And then suddenly you get it, you get the symptoms, and after that it really can be a nightmare and eventually you can die from it. Liver disease is serious. Now there's a medication that you can take or maybe an inoculation that supposedly will heal hep C. Now I, I'm a little skittish about this because um, it, what if you have after effects? If you have a shot and the shot lasts, for a long time. What if you tend to be allergic to it? What if something happens and it doesn't work right or you have too many side effects? Is there a way to reverse all of that? I always consider that when somebody says, well, all you need is three shots and you'll never have it again. And I always wonder about that. But that's for the scientists, I guess, to discover. But that's what hepatitis is, an inflammation of the liver that can last for a long time. And there are several types of it. And the next one I want to talk about is anemia. There are different types of anemia, and the one thing I want you to realize is don't think that just because you have anemia that it's always an iron deficiency. It is not always an iron deficiency. There are various causes, and there are various types of anemia. But what happens basically is that the red blood cells are not produced as they should be. And as a result of that, it can become chronic. You just do not have enough red blood cells 
in your system. Now, I've had chronic anemia. It started several years ago, and my doctor said, you know, you seem to be having anemia. And so he didn't give me any medication. Usually you say, well, do you want me to take iron? He says, no, I don't want you to take iron. N don't take anything for now. And every time I had a blood test, the anemia was still there. And then they finally diagnosed it as chronic, and it was getting worse and worse. I just wasn't getting the red blood cells that I was supposed to get. And then suddenly it started to reverse itself. And I had a nurse call me and said, you know, your blood looks better now. And then every time I went, it looked better and better. Now, I assume I still have anemia, but not as bad as it was. And I said to the doctor, and this is no medical intervention, so I asked the doctor, why did it get bad, and why is it better? Because I hadn't taken any medication, I hadn't had any shots, I hadn't had any extra iron. And he said, you know, I think your body is just trying to catch up with itself. It let it go, and I got less and less and less and less red blood cells, and then suddenly it sensed that I needed these red blood cells, and so it started to progress and, and produce on its own. So it was catching up with itself. When it sensed the need, it started producing on its own. But the body can do amazing things with, with my heart. And I'm not just talking about me for the sake of doing it, but I've had a quadruple bypass, and the bypasses, two of them failed. And when they tried to put in a stent, which was unsuccessful, they saw that my heart had produced two new bypasses on its own without any medical intervention, without any symptoms, without any medication, without anything. When they went up, there were two new bypasses that, that the heart had created on its own. Now, some hearts will do this, and I know that um, if a doctor knows your heart is trying to build a bypass to replace one that's failing, they may give you medication to see if they can get it to do it faster because time might be of the essence before you have one blocked artery completely closed. But at any rate, the body is very capable of healing itself if the conditions for it are right. So anemia, there are different types. Don't assume that it's always iron. Uh, if you have enough iron, you, don't, you should not take more because you can get sick if you get too much iron and you can feel absolutely miserable. That happened to some relatives and friends of mine when they went on a special diet. It was supposed to be wonderful. You were supposed to be feeling great. And they, there were smoothies that you would drink two or three times a day and they felt good and then suddenly they got sick because they were ingesting a lot of iron that they didn't need. They were not iron deficient. Now, if they were iron deficiency, it would have helped them some. But if they're not iron deficient and they have too much iron, it can make you feel really sick. And then you have to stop taking the iron. So that's anemia. I wanted to talk a little about Berger's disease. Berger is spelled not like a, a burger when you go to the dry union, you know, when you go to the restaurant. This is B U E R G E R S, Berger's. It's spelled, pronounced Berger's, B U E R G E R S, and it's caused by smoking. The one cause of Berger's disease is smoking, there is no other cause. That is the one and the only cause. And the only way that you can heal from it is you have to stop smoking. You know, every time I go to a cardiologist, it's the same question, are you smoking? No, I'm not. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. But what happens in burgers is the fact that if you are smoking, your blood vessels are extremely damaged and they close. They narrow and they close so you don't get circulation through them. When that happens, then you can start losing limbs because your limbs don't have circulation. They turn black. You know, there's nothing there, and they have to cut the limbs off. They have to do amputations. And eventually, you have so many amputations that you just die from it. It is a killer disease with that one cause and that one cure. Stop smoking. And if it, but I'm not saying everybody gets it. This is not a terribly common disease, but it is a danger if you're smoking that that'll happen because it does, uh, smoking does intense 
damage to blood vessels, whether you get Burgers or not. It does a lot of damage to, to blood vessels, and so uh, usually doctors will keep asking you if you're smoking, stop. I realize it's hard to do that. Somebody told me that it's harder to get off cigarettes than it is to get off heroin. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I've been told that on a number of occasions. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I wouldn't want to stop now. There's no reason to. And I have a healthy immune system, despite everything else that might be wrong. I have a healthy immune system and I have a healthy circulatory system and the combination of both of those has has helped me a lot in my life so that's Burgess disease and then I'm looking at immunodeficiency diseases immunodeficiency diseases is when you do not your immune system is not strong enough to fight off diseases and this is where you get HIV. HIV stands for human, uh, human immunodeficiency disease. That's what it stands for. HIV, human immunodeficiency disease, that's where it comes from. And HIV uh, leads to AIDS. Now, you can have HIV for about 10 years before it, it to, turns to AIDS because your body is busy fighting off diseases, and, and eventually it catches up to you, but you don't have a lot of symptoms for maybe about 10 years. Then you start getting all kinds of symptoms, and then you can be diagnosed as AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency virus. That's what that stands for. And um, it leads to opportunistic infections. So what are the opportunistic infections? If you have AIDS, well, pneumonia, toxoplasmosis, which is an illness of the central nervous system, candidiasis. Candidiasis is kind of a fungus infection, but you can't get rid of it because you don't have an immune system that's strong enough to do it. And you get white plaques in your body and in the mouth, and it's called thrush. And it's in the mouth. You can't brush it off, but you know you can't brush your teeth and have it go away. The only way that you can get rid of it would be to improve your your uh, system, improve your defensive system, and so that you could fight it yourself. But it's called thrush. Very uncomfortable, awful to deal with, with white plaques. The white plaques all over your mouth due to the fact that you cannot find. Uh, you cannot fight it because you don't, do not have an immune system that's strong enough to do it. Then you, there's herpes simplex, which is blisters, fever, and pain. Then you have Kaposi sarcoma. Kaposi sarcoma is like a cancer. It's purplish or pinkish. They're nodules, but they're like in bunches in your body, and they, can, they have been considered to be cancer. And if you have cancer, Kaposi sarcoma, the only way you're going to get it is the fact that your immune system is so weakened that it can't fight it off. A healthy immune system will fight it off. You won't have it. A healthy immune system will fight off candidiasis. If you have a strong immune system, you will fight off these opportunistic infections, or at least most of them. But if your immune system is weak, either because you're sick and, and you have used the immune system and it's weakened because of the illnesses, because it's already fighting, or because you have AIDS or something like that, then, uh, then you can't fight off these opportunistic infections. You have to have a fairly healthy immune system to fight off anything. So uh, we talked about that and the possibility of cancer with Kaposi's. And I would assume if I saw a patient with Kaposi's, I would assume probably they had AIDS and that their immune systems just weren't working. You don't stop to think of how important your immune system is. I've got a cold, I'll be all right in a couple of days. Well, if that's true, then that's wonderful because ordinarily you wouldn't. There's another immune disorder that, that a person has. It's called MRSA's. Now, it's not an opportunistic infection in the sense that you have AIDS, and AIDS causes this because of the, the uh, problem with the immune system, but MRSA's is you get it in nursing homes a lot. 
I have heard that if you're in a nursing home as a staff person and you work at a nursing home, so you're there quite a bit, or as a patient who's been there even three or four weeks, and you know, people who have surgery and have rehab after the surgery, where do they put them? They put them in the nursing home because they have become rehab centers as well as caring for the elderly. And uh, you can get it. There's no cure for MRSAs. There's absolutely no, uh, no medication that you can take will kill off MRSAs. And if you've been in a nursing home for any period of time at all, then you have it. You just have it. But if you have a healthy immune system, you'll never know it because you're not going to get any symptoms. But if you don't have a healthy immune system, you'll start getting the symptoms of, of MRSAs and you're going to get some nodules here and there and uh, the, you, just, you just can't fight it. There is no antibiotic in the world that can fight MRSAs and what's going to happen is eventually people die of MRSAs. In nursing homes particularly, they will die of MRSAs. So it is important to keep your healthy in order to have a healthy immune system your immune system will not be healthy if you are too tired if you are too tired you're not getting enough rest you're pushing yourself too hard then you're going to get illnesses that you can't fight off oh I've had this cold for three months I just can't get rid of it you know why? Because your immune system is down. And one of the reasons that the immune system is down is that you're too tired. And if you get enough rest, you will not only feel a lot better, but the immune system will come back up and it'll be able to fight off illnesses that you had trouble with before. So if you have an illness and it lags on and on and on and on and on, really it, it, you should be doing things to help to uh, strengthen your immune system. There are early herbs that you can take, and uh, a doctor can help with that, but you have to have an immune system that's healthy in order to fight off, uh, fight off illnesses. In the case of HIV and in the case of AIDS, you do not have the strength to fight off the illness, and it will get worse and worse and worse. Now, I realize that today people take cocktails, medical cocktails, which is a series of pills mixed together that is specific for diseases in order to get rid of the infection so that you can continue to live a fairly normal life. If your immune system is good, you don't need all of that. If your immune system is poor, it's just failing you, either because you've been sick for a long time and it's just weakened uh, because of the work that it's doing in your system, or because you've gotten an illness in which your immune system is just playing too weak to fight it off. You know, sometimes people are born with a weak immune system so they can't fight things off. Sometimes people are born with a strong uh, uh, system and they can fight things off. Sometimes if you have a weak immune system, it's genetic with you, or sometimes it's because you've already fought so much that the immune system is just weakening because it's fought and fought and fought diseases that's just gotten to the point where it really can't do what it should be able to be do, doing normally. But the immune system is the key. If you are overtired and you don't feel well, then what's going to happen is you've got to get more sleep, you've got to get more rest, you've got to get more vitamins, or whatever it is that you need, or whatever it is that you lack, and you need to be on some kind of a program to help build up your immune system. And when the immune system is built up, you can fight off a lot. Unfortunately, illnesses like HIV and AIDS are really hard to deal with, and you have to depend upon the medical expertise of doctors to fight off the illnesses as you get the illnesses, because you're getting the illnesses because your immune system is shot, because you get AIDS and HIV. So it's a, it's a complicated situation, but you have to fight it, and you have to do the best that you can with it. And some of these illnesses you can recover from. Some some of these illnesses you cannot recover from and that's it's very difficult to deal with so you just handle it as best that you can get the best medical expertise that you can and live your life the best that you can and if you're a person with a chronic illness do not blame yourself 
You know, do not blame yourself for something that's, that's inherited. A lot of these chronic illnesses are genetic. You have it because people who were, uh, you know, you are descendants of people who had it. Your grandmother had it. Your great-grandmother had it. You're not to blame for all of that. So your attitude in handling chronic illnesses is going to help you. If you have a good attitude, you can lead a pretty normal life. You have to take care of the illnesses, but that doesn't mean you have to give up on life. So I'm going to close it here and what we're going to do next time we're going to start next time is I'm going to give you some information about personality and what it is and this is going to be like a section that I do it'll be more than one segment and then we'll get into the development of the human being from birth to death all of the stages of development what happens in the stages of development but that's kind of a major study it's going to take some time but what I really want to do is take a section of time about psychology and what it is, starting off with what personality is and handling it that way before getting into another major study. So this brings us back to our roots in terms of psychology, what it is, what it can do, what it can't do. And every so often I do a review like this and it gives us a kind of break before we start the, the next major study. So we'll be doing this and starting this next time. So please join me then.